want to thank the media for coming out here uh, Monday morning. Uh, we're here once again to talk about bioswells, which the city and the Department of Environmental Protection is now calling rain gardens, a much more diplomatic term, but it's still a bioswell. We all know that we have to improve the environment. We all know that it's a problem that the city has been in violation of state and federal regulations for decades about allowing stormwater and sanitary sewage on heavy rains to go into the waterways and the bay. No question about that. What we've been doing over time has been building the treatment plants, and that's where the water should be going. So a number of years ago, the city came up with a plan. They reached out to the State Department of Environmental Conservation to say, well, you know what, one of the ways we can do this is increase green infrastructure. On the surface, that sounds great. But one of the aspects of that overall program is these bioswells. We had a meeting with a number of elected officials that joined me and civic leaders. I think at the time we had about 30 civic associations represented. We had the, assist, the, the acting commissioner come down, a number of people from DEP, and we all said to him, listen, you want to do this? Fine. We don't think it's going to work. You want to do this? You have to give homeowners the right to opt out because basically you're putting it in front of somebody's home. Even though the city owns this grass strip, in most cases, which is the right of way, at the end of the day, there are so many issues related to it. And the fact, who's going to maintain it? When this was first brought to my attention um, by this gentleman right over here, um, I reached out to the Department of Environmental Protection and I went on their website to see what a bioswell was. And, and I had to laugh when I saw that they made the commitment that they were going to hire people. And once a week, they were going to have somebody come by and clean and maintain each bioswell. Now, you know, I have a few people laugh. We've all laughed at that. I mean, they don't clean, they don't clean the catch basins for years, but somehow they're going to come out and clean these, uh, these bioswells. After I raised that as an issue, they changed it to once every two weeks, which is still ludicrous. Um, this green infrastructure program, from what I understand, is going to cost the city a billion dollars. Now that includes obviously the rest of the program, but we have said from the very beginning, we want an opt-out. We want residents to be able to say, listen, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I don't want this in front of my house for a number of reasons. One. Um, it's a hazard to get in and out of your car because basically you'll be stepping on dirt. Two, it's the maintenance issue. And it, a lot of people brought up about uh, their sprinkler system, um, etc. The city has made some accommodations to us. They now will allow somebody who has a handicapped placard to opt out. But how many seniors or disabled individuals have actually gone to the trouble of getting a, a placard? So they won't recognize it unless you have a placard. I actually said to the agency the end of last week, that's not enough in that respect. The other uh, aspect of it is that they will, they will do a couple of options to, in sort of, instead of the rain garden, they may not put the fence up, <coughs> they may put some sort of permeable surface that's like concrete or, or gravel or something, um, but it's still not enough. What has to be done is to allow people to opt out. And I continue to say to the city, how many, the, the, the small percentage of people that will opt out will not affect the viability of the program. Because there are a lot of people who are concerned about the environment um, who will want to have this and w who will not mind maintaining it. But what drives me crazy, and I know that some of the civics will speak to you as well, and the homeowner, we don't like being told what to do in front of our own property, even though the city may own this. 
We pay some of the highest property taxes in the country. All we want is some service and the right to be in our home safe and sound. The city should not be dictating to those homeowners what they do in front of their own house. Remember, the city owns the sidewalk, but they make the homeowner maintain it and take care of it. That's a huge expense. And at the end of the day, it's still going to be the homeowner that maintains these bioswells. I don't believe a word of the city's commitment that they're going to have enough people to go around and do this. Now, as I mentioned a few, a few seconds ago, DP, uh, I met with them. They came out Thursday or Friday, was it? Friday. Friday. Thursday. 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 It was Thursday. They heard about the press conference, and they wanted to assure me that, well, you know, we're going to do the handicap back. You know, anybody who has a handicap permit will change the method, um, but we're not going to allow our opt-out. Now, previously, as part of that public hearing, that public meeting we had, DEP had made a promise to me that they would not actually do construction in my Senate district, which is the only commitment they ever made in the city of New York. They would still do the soil testing, but they wouldn't do actual construction. They now have said to me, that commitment is gone. We're not going to allow a full opt-out. We're going to be coming around and doing construction. It may not happen immediately, but the commitment they said that they would hold off is now gone. They're going to go ahead, full steam. And I told them, well, you're going to have a fight on your hands because we're not going to let this go. We are absolutely not going to let this go. So we're here today to say to the city, once again, you must allow the homeowner, the property owner, to opt out. It's the right thing to do by the residents of this city who pay some of the highest property taxes in the country. I'm going to let Edna Harris talk. We're in front of her house. Then I'm going to call on Peter Kaufman, who... Um, reached out to me and actually did his own little analysis of bioswells, and I'm going to have him talk. Okay. We have a couple of Let slides. Him first. Let him go first. You want him to go yeah, first? Yeah. Okay. Peter, come on over. Thank you, Senator. So why don't you describe why you got involved and, you know, exactly what what we're showing here. Uh, I, they, they marked the sidewalk in front of my house. Could you speak louder? Sure. They marked the sidewalk in front of my house. And I asked James Gallagher what's going on, and he told, told me about bioswales. So I looked it up, and I said, I don't want that in front of my house. Now, I'm, I'm a research scientist, so I look at it from that perspective. There are many, many scientific problems with this, chemical and physical, and I can run through them pretty quickly. When when rain comes into the plane. <laughs> that's the other issue. That's the other issue, but that's not for today. We'll get to that. <laughs> that is the other issue. You want me to hold it? Just wait for the plane. You okay, Teddy? Yeah, I'm good, man. I got my good news. When rain comes off your house, runs down your property, and it comes into the street, now all houses. In, in zones like this are pitched. They're high in the back and low in the front. So that all the water drains into the street. The curves, the streets are curved so that the water runs along the curve and every street has, is on a hill so the water goes into the storm drain. That's where you want the water because as you mentioned before, um, it goes through the sewer system and ends up in the waste treatment plant. That's where you want it. You don't want that here. Um, so what you have is, here's your sidewalk, the grass, the bioswale. Now, this area, I'm, I'm familiar with the, with the ground surveys because I had them done twice for my house. Three or four feet below us is clay. Clay doesn't absorb water. It dissolves and will go into the aquifer and make a sinkhole. You park a truck on that, you, you, it's, it's, you know, it's Russian roulette. So what they're going to do is all the rainwater and all the contamination is going to be in the bioswale. So and it will be contaminating the groundwater. Um, so that, that's bad for wildlife, uh, if people have wells. Um, so realize that on your lawn people use uh, fertilizers, pesticides, insecticides, all kinds of different things, and all that stuff washes into the street. You don't want that here. Um, 
So also under the street, they're going to be you know, cutting a big hole in the street. All your utilities run from the, from the street into your house. So they're going to undermine it. Understand that this area has been here for almost 100 years, since it was a farm. That's about right. So everything is stable. When you start digging that up and putting extra water in it, you're going to have sewer lines disconnecting, water lines disconnecting, power lines shorting out. You're going to have all kinds of problems. They can't guarantee that won't happen. And I said, if you're going to put one of these things in front of my house, give me a, a letter of indemnification that says if anything happens, you pay for it. I don't think I don't think they'll go for that. No, they, that's, that's a pipe dream. That's a pipe dream if we ever heard one. So th there are there are many issues. You know, again, uh, chemical and physical. Um, so you know, all kinds of things. You know, the animal feces, everything. You don't want that here. You want it in the waste treatment plant. So spend a billion dollars and build another waste treatment plant. That's right. You know, it, it's very interesting because the whole logic as to why the city is in violation is because we're putting contaminated water into the bay and into the river. So now we're going to put it in front of everybody's house. How does that make any sense when you think about it? It's sort of really convoluted. Um, yet, they're going ahead with this. What I'm going to do is, thanks to, to Peter Kaufman, I'm going to send his analysis to the State Department of Environmental Conservation and ask them to take another serious look at this. Because from our perspective, it just doesn't work, besides the fact that you're forcing the homeowner to take this responsibility. And they should. Edna? Now, I'll have Edna speak, and then we'll have some of the civics. Okay. Well, I represent my husband's president of the West Cunningham Park Civic Association. <laughs> my husband is president of the West Cunningham Park Civic Association. We have lived here almost 49 years. I have lived in this part of Queens since 1953. So I've seen not a lot of changes because this neighborhood is very stable. I know that when I went to the two meetings and the conference call, I was told there would be no worries if I have underground sprinklers. Well, I have two heads right behind me. That's number one. They, came they, will, they will allow, if you have a sprinkler, not to opt out. Not to, not to, I you will No, 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 if you have a sprinkler system, they will, that's the second part, which I failed to mention. Um, if you have a senior citizen card, placard, you will be able to opt out. If you have a sprinkler system, you will be able to opt out. Those are the two, that's so, it. Well, they came in anyway. They came here 7.30 in the morning because they were doing the rest of the street. And I was sitting out here for four days under the tree. Ah, uh, you're not coming to my house. Uh -huh. <laughs> so one morning I was out at, at 6.30 in the morning, as I am every morning. I come back at 7.30, and there they all are, and there, the machine and everything. And the, the guys who were working, they work for an Associated Environmental Services, 25 Central Avenue, Hopog. It's not the workers. They said, look, she's got letters that she wrote to Senator Avila. She has sprinkler systems. And if you could see the marks on the sidewalk, I have gas, power, water, and sewer lines coming through here. The gas, the power, and the uh, electricity goes to five houses. Two here, me, and two at the other end. I walk here. It's all, it, it looks like like graffiti all over my sidewalk. First of all, that that's even the before that, I didn't know what these green what this green paint was. We had little green lines all over the place. Uh, where is she? The girl over here told me because she heard it by the grapevine. Her name is Jill Goldstein. She's my next door neighbor. She says, from the grapevine, nobody said anything to anybody. This came and they painted. And I got a little upset. And I got very upset. Now, they, they came, they called the police because we didn't want them to, 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 to dig, even to test it. Called the police. Police showed up. One little policeman comes up to here on me, and I'm not finished with him. <laughs> he says, why don't you go work on your flowers? Yeah, that sounds like that. Uh -huh. oh. 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 
the wrong person. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you didn't tell me that part. <laughs> Don't say that to me. I'm an independent thinker. Um, we've we've lived in this house f almost 53 years. Uh, almost. I'm, I'm yeah. Almost 49 years. And if there's something that I want to do, and I really have a, I really have a feeling about it, Robert says, go do it. He's not going to say to me, oh, no, you can't do go that. Go work on the flowers. Go work on the flowers. No. Uh, when we've all had a chance, and I have some, some lemonade and some water, um, I want you to see the flowers. Yes, I work on my flowers. Yes, I do. But don't tell me to go here because I have a, I have a question and I have concerns. And um, when I when I I sent all lots of letters to, to the senator, and then his office called and said, "Would you? We want to have a, a a press conference." And I said, "Have it in my house," because I am that I'm that committed. The city does whatever the city cares to do. They don't care. They don't tell you, which really annoys me, and they don't care. That's a polite way of saying it. Because I would have said them. Good. That's why we have the Senate. Do you know, That's um, why we have him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know? Um, even the agency admits um, it took a while, but they admit they admit they did a terrible job in community outreach. They never notified anybody what the green markings in the street were. Now they're saying, "Oh, we're going to have a better system. Yeah. We're going to have it on the website that people will know what's coming and going." But meanwhile, even after they made that commitment doing it anyway. They didn't tell people what the soil testing was going to be. I thought, well, they're going to come, they'll stick a little iron rod oh, in the hell ground. No. Oh, no. And then the first person oh, called no. me and said, you got to come out and look at this. Hell no. I came out to somebody's house and I thought, they're drilling for oil. Oh, you got <laughs> it. it was a at huge derrick. 7.30 in the morning. 7.30 in the morning. Don't talk to me, talk to the press. <laughs> talk to the press. Uh, the press the and it was, I couldn't believe the operation. Um, and of course, we're paying somebody outside of New York City for this. Um, and I have had numerous complaints from the property owners where they did the soil testing because the truck comes on the sidewalk. Yes. Breaks the curb, breaks the sidewalk, ruins the lawn. Now the city has to come back out because the city's liable for that. So you've got this whole system which just does not work. Ed and I want to thank you for having us here. Um, I have a list of civics. I know some of them want to talk. First, I'm going to have friends of Fort Totten, who was the first person who. Okay, come on up. Who was the first person who brought this to my attention in his hey. neighborhood? Hi, so introduce name is, yourself. My name is Joe Branzetti. First of all, I'd like to say one thing. Without the newspaper, Bayside Times, and without this gentleman right here, we wouldn't be here. I went to different people after what basically what happened. They were walking the sidewalks. I came out of my house. I said, what are they doing? I stopped the gentleman, he gave me a pamphlet, one pamphlet. I went to 90 different houses and asked them, and three people out of the 90 houses in a five mile area knew what was going on. So I said, okay, let me go. So after trying some other civic people, not civic groups, but some of our, well, trying some other people which said, why are you getting involved? Don't get involved with this, you know, leave it alone. I went to this gentleman's office. The moment I walked in his office, his secretary came up to me and said, Joe, sit down, we're gonna take all the information. And this is where this all started. If it wasn't got guys and ladies, anytime something happens in our neighborhood here in Queens, if he gets involved in it, it gets corrected right away. And then I went to the paper and they did an article on it. And you know, it's, it's unbelievable how they, you know, and we went to meetings. DP, DEP hates me. <laughs> they, they know, you know, they know me and they hate me because I dealt with them a lot. Also, with the, I like to say about their, their digging the holes, I also spoke to them because, I don't know if the senator knows, they were only doing the first and last house on the block. They weren't doing the middle until I came and told them I was calling the news, news Channel 4 to do a whole thing on them. Yeah, they were only, I said, guys, it's, well, the soil here is the same as is in the middle of the block. I said, no, it's not. It's clay. You're dig digging into clay. Well, there's no clay here. I said, well, maybe there's no clay here, but there's going to be clay here. And the other thing is that I, I spoke to him about is I live where, in a neighborhood where 
uh, we get water into, into our basements. I had to put a drain system throughout the whole basement. I asked them about that. No, Joseph, don't worry about it. It's not going to go down. I said, yeah, it is. It is going to go down. And what are you doing, you know, again, about, you know, uh, who's going to take care of this? And then some of the areas that they did, it's half on my property and half on his property. So I said, yeah, who's going to take care between the two of us? And they're, oh, no, don't. We, we'll take care of everything. I said, yeah, okay. That's, that's really going to happen. What about the water? What about mosquitoes? What about, you know, and they're like, don't worry about it. It won't be a problem. But, you know, it is. And again, if it wasn't for this gentleman here and the, the newspaper, we, they would have just put it in it and not said anything to us. I told them, you know, you could have invested in a little pamphlet, spent a couple more cents on that pamphlet that you gave me and stuck it in everybody's mail's box as you mark this thing and explain what it is. People, you know, this, this line here is for electric and then the, the other ones are for uh, Con Ed. They, didn't, they, don't, they come and they mark the streets and they do everything. They don't say anything to anybody. And that's basically it on okay. my end. Thank you, thank you again. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Bob Friedrich, um, Glen Oaks Cooperative. Yes. And then we have Elaine Young, the co president of the West Cunningham Park Civic Association, is on vacation, but she asked me to read this on her behalf. My name is Bob Friedrich, and I am president of Glen Oaks Village. We are the largest garden apartment <coughs> residential co op in New York, and I fully support her sentiments and the West Cunningham Park Civic Association's position on this issue. With Senator Vella's leadership, we have asked DEP to give us a bioswale full opt out option. After deafening silence from the DEP for more than a year, we have just learned that they know better than homeowners and have refused to do so. Although, although we don't technically own the space in front of our home where the bioswales will be installed, we use those spaces every day. We clean those spaces every day. We look at those spaces every day and we maintain those spaces every day. The DEP does neither. We do not feel that the DOP has our best interest in mind and we foresee tremendous problems with bioswales installed in front of our homes. DEP's cavalier attitude towards homeowners is evident in the process that they created to test for bioswale locations. Many of the homeowners here can attest uh, and tell stories of the absolute nightmare that the testing has been. This testing is done by a contractors, by contractors the DOP has hired but DOP, DEP is conspicuously absent throughout the testing process. Crews have left horrible messes, illegally closed streets, fire hydrants open full force, cracked sidewalks, and one only needs to look at the houses where the testing was done to see large gaping holes left in the ground where the drilling occurred. All completely unacceptable. If a child, adult, or dog gets a foot caught in one of those holes, serious injury will be sustained. And now the DO, now the DEP, I'm so used to saying DOT. Yeah, yeah. You know, those other issues. Now the D, <laughs> DEP asks us to believe that they will maintain the bioswell areas in front of our homes. We can only imagine what the installation process will be like and the resulting damage, mess, and carnage left behind. And maintenance of those areas. I assure you, DEP will be MIA. DEP does not care about homeowners, and as homeowners, we demand a full opt-out option. Thank you, Tony. Now, I have a number of civics. I don't know if everybody wants to speak. In no particular order. Uh, Belrose Hillside. Me. Jerry. Okay, uh, I'm Jerry Wind, president of the Belrose Hillside Civic Association. I My civic association fully supports Senator Avella's initiative and what the speakers have alluded to that have preceded me. Uh, one thing I do want to add, I am a retired Con Ed inspector and I can tell you right now these gas and electric lines are buried somewhere between two and three feet below grade. Now I was looking at this picture online and I'm very concerned because when they're excavating I have a feeling they're going to be hitting the lines. And, of course, that can cause a major problem. As Ms. Harris had said, she has uh, what they call uh, the main service and what's called the loop service, which services more than one house. This is, this is very, very, con uh, it concerns me anyway. But uh, also, I think the city should re-examine their policy about concreting in front of your own home. 
because right now in my Civic we have a lot of homes that are about 40 feet wide. The the city the city law on that is that they can only they only have to leave 25 percent of that 40 feet for as, as grass area and they can concrete so they can make another parking spot for their cars. And of course the rainwater doesn't go into the soil. It uh, it comes back and uh, it's not absorbed. So that's about all I have to say. Oh, oh. Queens Colony Civic? Oh. <laughs> I'm hiding. Hi, I'm Angela Cugliaro. I'm president of Queens Colony Civic Association, which is at the southern end of Belrose. Um, I concur and uh, support what Tony, uh, Senator Ravella has said. I think the biosoils are not really a good idea. It's going to create major inconvenience for the residents, along with um, the fact that it's going to affect the sidewalks, the soil in front of the houses. Um, parking is going to be a problem. If you have a passenger in your car, you're not going to be able to pull up in front of your curb. You're going to have to stay two or three feet away from the curb to let your passenger out. They're going to have to walk back so many feet to get on the sidewalk. Um, may not be such a problem in the summertime or in the spring, but come the winter when you have snow and everything else, it's going to be a major inconvenience for everybody. From what I heard of the drilling, um, that's ridiculous. Uh, to, to do that kind of damage to people's property is, is totally unacceptable. And again, maintenance. They don't maintain the trees and the, the parks and the the islands in the uh, you know along the city streets they're going to come here every two weeks and maintain biosoils I don't think so and would the same policy follow that we as <coughs> residents are not allowed to touch the trees so would we also not be allowed to touch the biosoils and take out the weeds or prune whatever they put in there um, I just um, agree that we should have the option to opt out of it um, just doing for disabled and f if you have a sprinkler system shouldn't be the only criteria. It's your house, granted the city owns the sidewalk, but it's still in front of your house and you should have the option to say yes or no. Rocky Hill Civic, I, I saw. Right. My name is Frank Toner, I'm the Vice President of the Rocky Hill Civic Association and I don't want to keep repeating what every other civic has said, but we just strongly support uh, Senator Avella's uh, option on allowing the homeowner to opt out clearly. Um, and also just bring up the fact that when you start digging up streets, you know, you cause problems. I mean, sometimes you have to go in there to fix the water pipes, the electricity or whatever, but you know, you don't tr try to do it too, too much because you're just going to interrupt the system. We have a, for instance, where I live on Winchester Boulevard, they've been digging the street there and because they've gone in there, there are four, in a one block area, there are now 14 water lines that have been replaced in the last two years. And I attribute that to the fact that they go in one place and dig and disrupt things and then something else breaks somewhere else, you know. So you have to be very careful about doing that and doing it only when it's really necessary. So, you know, we, we have some doubts about the validity or the, how well this system is going to work. Uh, not sure that we're ready to allow biosoils all over the place. Thank you. Casino Park Civic, Beverly. I'm Beverly McDermott and I'm the president of the Casino Park Civic. In Casino Park Civic area, we have some people like this lady who have lines, power lines, etc., buried. Some don't. So you can, on one block, you can have alternates. Some are on the line, some are buried. I don't think the people who are doing the testing, the people who are coming around, poking into those areas, are always aware of that. Sometimes we've even had to stop and tell them, you better check your paperwork because this is not an area that where the lines come in from a pole. The biggest problem we have in our area, and you've been very blessed so far here, is that the city has done absolutely nothing little to nothing to stop the cementing in, in, of entire properties. I mean literally from the base of the house all the way out to the sidewalk. Nothing but cement. And when you complain about it, you report it, well we sent a guy and we don't see a problem. 
Well, he's either blind or he's gone home with a little bit more money in his pocket, and I'm saying that straight out, and I don't care if the inspectors like it or not. I don't believe they're honest, and the city is not being honest with us. This business of acting like a dictator, well, we're paying very good taxes, and we try to obey the laws and maintain our property and do the right things and keep the environment safe, keep our home safe, to introduce something like this which may end up being an environmental mess is just ludicrous. And everybody who has said everything here before, um, yes, they know exactly what they're talking about. They're not talking off the top of their heads. If the mayor wants to go ahead with this plan, if the state wants to go ahead with this plan, they've done it under duress, our duress. And I think they better start listening. People are getting tired of this. Thank you. Down Park Civic. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Senator Avella for spotlighting this issue. I knew nothing about bioswales until Senator Avella brought us to the DEP conference. Lo and behold, two weeks after the conference, we were very hot under the collar regarding this issue. And I go to the DEP office on Horace Harding Boulevard with the neighbor to pay a delinquent water bill. And I'm looking out in front of the office, and there's a bioswale. And what does the bioswale have? Dead flowers, garbage, all kinds of foodstuffs, and some squirrels busy eating the foodstuffs that were left there. Okay? We in the Bound Park area were very, very upset about this bioswale issue. We presented the senator with hundreds of signatures on our petitions against having bioswales and in favor of opting out. You're trampling on, the city is trampling on our rights as homeowners. We pay our taxes. We maintain the neighborhood. Look at this neighborhood. Look at your own neighborhoods. They're great. Thank you, Senator Vella, for standing up for us. You're still standing. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're still standing. No, my, my knee is locked. Yeah. Um, okay. Hollisswood Civic, Linda, do you want to speak? Yes. Hi, my name is Linda Valentino. I'm the president of Hollisswood Civic Association, and we've been working with Senator Avella. Uh, I just want to say that Hollisswood is definitely against having this kind of thing forced on people. As everyone has said, I don't want to keep beating the dead horse, but you pay your taxes, you do the right thing, you try to keep your property in a certain way. And I know for a fact that they say they're going to keep these things clean, they won't. They tried to do this to, uh, in a little park we had. They tried to put in a, 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 a bathroom, said they were going to come and take care of it. Well, the year later, the parks department went down the hill, and thank God they didn't get the bathroom in there because you know what would have happened. I just feel that it is wrong for a city agency to force individual homeowners to take something that will affect their particular property and their life. I think that the parking is going to be horrendous for these people. Uh, it's going to be a dangerous thing. <laughs> a lady just fell right here because the streets are in such good shape. They, they just don't maintain. It sounds like a wonderful idea. Maybe that's what they hope they're going to do. But we all know that what they hope they're going to do and what actually will happen are two different stories. So Hollisswood is definitely against the bioswales, and they should allow individual homeowners to opt out. Thank you. We also have Northeast Flushing Civic. Did you want to? Wait to plan. I can just walk out of it. Uh, Tony, I want to thank you very much for taking this issue up because it really is an, an important issue uh, of forcing people to do something they don't want. And basically, this is a really stupid idea when you come right down to it. I just had a long chat with uh, the fellow who explained all of this to me, gave me a short lecture on soil mechanics. And uh, as I said, it's not going to be anything really tremendously saving the city from anything, from as far as water flow whether it goes down the sewer drain or it goes into the aquifer, it's the same thing. So uh, again, people should not be forced to have this in front of their house. That's really the, the, the key issue here, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Utopia Estates. Who's yeah. here from Utopia Estates? Okay, I wanted to thank uh, Tony <laughs> <laughs> for all the work he's done on our behalf. Um, Introduce yourself. I, uh, my name is Howard Chustick. I'm a proud member of the Utopia Estates uh, Civic Association. Um, former block captain 
and I remember many, many years ago, uh, I would go from door to door and drop off the circular. And, you know, we knew everybody on the block. It was very community oriented. And I'd speak to someone, I'd say, what improvement would you need in this area? And invariably they said, we need something like catch basins. If we had more, <laughs> more catch basins, uh, things would go a lot smoother. But I'd like to, you know, address remarks uh, to the mechanics of upping out. Uh, we have, a, my wife and I have a sprinkler system, so we're going to up out, obviously. But the house next to us uh, is slated to have the biosphere, and every other house is. Those people aren't here today. They won't know anything about biosphere. And, you know, when they're consulted, they'll say, well, you know, if it's good for the city, it's good for us. So I'm more concerned, not with us, because we're here, we know whether to opt out or not, but people who come over from other countries, there's a whole migration of people on our block uh, who barely could speak English. And they're going to have that biosphere because they don't know the pros and cons of it, really. So a house next to mine that's slated to have the biosphere, this is a, a person who comes from the Soviet Union. He's not up on any of the issues that affect the community. And uh, we had to go through channels to have him knock down a fence, which was, uh, was a steel fence, which was almost like a fortress that he had. And I had to convince him, you're in America now, you don't have to live like that. But he does things that, uh, you know, hurt people. Um, but getting back to this, there has to be a way, maybe through the press, to come out with arguments for and against it, or to take a stand that we in the Utopia States community do not see value to this at all, and it will upset the community no end. I think it has to be more of a group effort than just an individual homeowner who says, I don't want it. Because the whole block has many people from other countries who do not know the pros and cons, really. So the city will go ahead, well, we haven't heard from them, let's do it. So I'd like maybe the press, you know, to take Tony's view that it is not good for the city and not to have something like this ruining neighborhoods. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, we, and we also have a number of civic associations who couldn't be with us today, uh, including the Queen Civic Congress. But as some of the press may remember when we had that big community meeting, we had over 30 civics, um, well beyond my Senate district. Uh, and I'll just mention, somebody mentioned about how they had seen a, a bioswell existing outside my Senate district. I did a press conference with a woman in Maspit, uh, because the city's been putting these bioswells in other places already. Um, it was 20 feet long. It was almost the entire frontage of her property. Um, and she it had been there for a couple of months. The flowers were gone. The dirt was eroded into the street and it had become a little illegal dumping site. And it has not improved since then. And that, that was like six months ago. So the city, when they say they're going to come out once every two weeks, is just baloney. I mean, come on. There has to be some sort of, you know, realistic appraisal of this. And again, the civics that are here represent thousands tens of thousands of homeowners, um, we need the city to agree to let homeowners opt out. I'll take questions from the media. I know it's been a long one. So uh, you guys don't see the uh, alternative bioswales, like the, just the patch of concrete and the patch of grass as being a viable alternative well, to this? it doesn't address the overall issue. One, you're still forcing a homeowner to do something they don't want. And two, it doesn't address the issues that uh, Peter Kaufman brought up. If, in fact, we're in violation because we're dumping this stuff into the rivers and bays, then how does it make sense to do it on an individual basis in front of people's homes? And, you know, what hasn't been mentioned is Queens has a very high water table. So the water is, is continually rising. So this contaminated water is going to be higher and higher as the years go by. And I don't know, is there anybody on this block who doesn't get some sort of flooding 
in their basement at a heavy rain. Yeah, I have to get a French drain myself, and I get a little water. So people already have flooding in their basement from the existing system. Now you're going to dump how many thousands of gallons every year in front of their home? You're just going to exacerbate a situation that is already getting bad on its own. This is not the way to go. And the small, again, the small percentage of people who may say opt out is not going to affect the system. But the city of New York, through the Department of Environmental Protection, although they've taken a baby step towards us, doesn't go far enough. And, and I blame the mayor. What's the view on uh, commercial districts? We saw a plan on Bell Boulevard where they're putting a tree and they have the drains drain underneath the tree. Well, I know from Merchants Association, they have the same you know issues we do. I mean, obviously it's less of an impact on a commercial strip, but you have the same issue with parking. The, the, the merchants depend upon parking for their customers to come in and out. If you have to step out and you're stepping out into dirt, a lot of people won't park there. So we're, you're going to lose parking spaces, you're going to lose, merchants are going to lose their customers. There's no question about it. This is just a bad idea overall. Tony, I'm sorry. Any other questions from the media? That, what you just mentioned, yeah. a perfect example. If you go by Pesos Ices on 35th Avenue and you'll see uh, just what they're doing. They're marking the host. What he does is summertime, he puts out little tables as people come out, sit down nice and have ices and stuff. They marked his whole district there, so nobody's going to be able to pull up and park and go to his store. They're going to have to park a block or two away, which is going to take away customers and his business from them. They're not going to be able to put the tables out or anything. They're going to drill. They intentionally are going to drill down and put the bile swells there. Is that the location that's on 35th? Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because I actually went and got an ice the other day. and. The catch basin on the corner is absolutely collapsing into the ground. So it's interesting that at that location, they're going to do all these bioswells, but they're not fixing the catch no, basin. No, no, no. And one more thing, just real quick. For the people in the neighborhood. Watch your back. Oh, watch your back. For the people in the neighborhood, I, I do it, but I don't know if everybody else does. When your sewers get clogged, you can call up 311 and ask them, make sure your neighbors call, <laughs> and ask them to come in and clean out the sewer. They'll come, they'll clean out the whole sewer. This way, your water will drain down again and won't come back to here and flood your house. That's it. <laughs> so, right, that, that's I want to say one thing, Tony. We've been fighting for you. I'm from the Queens County Civic Association. I've turned in people even out of my neighborhood if I see them cementing their lawns because there's been a law around for years. And if the city isn't following up on that, how are they going to follow up on bioswells? Because if you put in a lawn illegally, I'd be happy as hell to see a truck come from the city and rip that cement out and then when the homeowner has to go for that money then he'll realize yeah I knew there was the law but I thought I'd get away with it they ought to hang these people for doing it and that's the biggest problem in some, some of the city <laughs> some of the areas that uh, Rosedale and some of these areas where everybody cemented their lawns and that's why there's flooding conditions now but did you ever see the city rip out one lawn because it was put in illegally never I mean, yeah. you know, not to belabor the point, it's been a long press conference. Um, but I can still see developers building homes and cementing over the front yard when that is clearly against the law. I don't understand why the Department of Buildings isn't telling them you can't do that. Why does it wait till the Community the Civic Association to notify the Department of Buildings? When I do, they'll go out. But why are they approving plans with these developers that do that? I want to thank the media for coming out. I want to talk to the residents. So if the residents can all get together.